So, we're here with Professor Kenneth Armstrong, who is the Director of the Centre for European Legal Studies, and this is the first in a series of videos about important issues leading up to the referendum. So, uh, Kenneth, do you want to start by talking about an area of your expertise and why that matters? I think the area that I think I'm interested in talking about is, is free trade. It seems to be a very important part of the referendum discussion. And on the one hand, for some people, free trade is important because they think it's a means of creating economic prosperity, uh, increasing jobs. But on the other hand, people worry about the consequence of free trade in areas, for example, like uh, workers' rights and even something like animal welfare, animal uh, protection. What role has the EU played in bringing about free trade? The origins of the European Union rest in the creation of a, a common market with the aims of removing barriers to trade uh, right across the, the EU member states. And again, for some people, that's a good thing because it enhances the choice for consumers in the market, increases possibilities for business in terms of cross-border uh, trade activity. But again, on the other hand, some might see then that as a, a danger and a risk in terms of the capacity of businesses to relocate from one part of the European Union to another with consequential impact on uh, jobs. And on the area of animal welfare, for example, the, the movement of livestock across borders and concerns about the levels of uh, protection that is afforded uh, in those circumstances. Mm. And so from a, a legal perspective, where do you think the, the law has got it right at EU law level? It's a difficult one because we always then have to think about, well, if it wasn't the European Union, what would fair trade look like elsewhere? I mean, much of the referendum debate discusses a range of different models, whether it's a, a Norway-style model or something like an international, a bigger international uh, trade model. I think one thing the European Union can say is that it does try and balance free trade with fair trade by ensuring that there are relevant rules and regulations uh, with respect to workers, with respect to uh, uh, animal welfare. And I think it's important to remember that outside the European Union, it's much harder to get that level of common agreement on, on regulatory standards uh, in other areas. So the European Union is an example of free trade, but it aspires to fair trade. Mm. And so what might the prospects be for this area of free trade post-Brexit? There are a number of different options that are available uh, if the UK decides that it wants to, to leave the European Union. It could decide to have a very minimum engagement uh, with the, the, the single market, only in respect of maybe goods and services, but not workers, and that would be a very minimal version. Or it could go for a more maximalist version, something quite similar to what is already in place, but perhaps with some stronger opt-outs in, in, in some areas. Mm -hmm. Is there one kind of key message that you'd like to be seeing better communicated about uh, free trade in the lead up to the referendum? I think that both, if you like, the traditional left and the traditional right have had different views on free trade and in some ways they are being articulated in, in the debates and I think that both sides in the political debate need to be more upfront about how they see uh, free trade and fair trade developing, whether the UK remains inside the European Union or if it exits the European Union, and if it exits the European Union, what version of free trade, fair trade balance would it like to see? Thank you very much.